All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Friday morning. Another edition of KFTV Post Game Live presented by Underdog Fantasy. CP the Fantasy, Alex Sotaros on the ones and twos. The Orange and Blue Crew touchdown in the Rose Garden for the first trip on their four game West Coast trip, man. And hey, this one was all Knicks all night, led by Captain Clutch Jalen Brunson with 45 points. A hot night from Jalen from start to finish, and the Knicks defense would rally around him and parry off a couple of Portland Trail Blazer runs, and the Knicks get the first one, man. 105 to 93, 16 more to go, and that's one down, man. Let's talk about it. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Hit the like button, hit the share button, and subscribe to the channel. Call us up, 657-383-1509, or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. Let's go. Al, how you feeling, man? Your, 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 your audio, audio, audio. So I'm mute for a second because I had a cough. Well, it's so, man. I took a nap. I was ready for this game. You know, oh, I'm you, for, you I'm took yeah, you took an old man nap. I look took an you. old man nap. Look at yeah, you, look, man. Yeah, look, I had to get ready for tonight well, because it is a 10 p.m. game, people. I'm mm. not gonna miss a 10 p.m. game. I got work tomorrow. I'm still gonna catch it. Still, still gonna do post game. I'm here, man. I'm here. Well, welcome, welcome to my life, my friend. <laughs> it's, it's, it took you. It's taking you. See, I, I see. I see a gradual progression in you. It's, it's oh, like here we go. It's like it's like the Jedi's. You know what I mean? It's like Obi and and Anakin. I see it. You, you're you're truly becoming an OG man. Who's Obi in this case? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, let's, let's get to the game. Knicks in Portland. Jalen Brunson in his bag early. You know, you found out early that Portland just had no answers for him, whether it was, you know, Kamara, who's a respectable young defender, a nice defender mm -hmm. there. I mean, once you saw how Brunson started the game, you knew a 40-piece was in store because mm -hmm. Brunson, he usually shows you, like, early in the game. Like, once he gets cooking, he had 11 points within, like, the first three minutes. You already knew what type of night it, it was going to be. On top of the fact that you're playing a Portland, a young Portland Trailblazer team who was shorthanded in, the, in their own right. Uh, but I thought this game really, you know, outside of Brunson's uh, heroics, which is on a nightly basis, I thought this game really, they really settled in midway through the second quarter. And I thought McBride was a big, big catalyst throughout the entire second quarter. Like, all his minutes in the second quarter, whether it was uh, defensively getting into his mid-range mm -hmm. bag, I mean, flashing the passes. I mean, the, the, the full-court pass he had to Dante, which you knew Dante wasn't going to finish that. But just, just good offense, man. Good orchestrated by McBride. And that really set a defensive tone for the team because then you saw some interesting rotations where you had McBride, Hart, Precious out there. You had McBride, Hart, OG out there, you know, with the guards and with the bigs. And they just really locked it down from the second quarter on. Blazers would make their charges. They had a couple of runs here and there uh, in the third and the fourth quarter. But, you know, ultimately the, the Knicks just overpowered them. It was too much Brunson. Three and ones in this game. 45 points for Brunson. 14 to 30 from the field. 15 to 17 from the free throw line. And and that was it, man. They just couldn't handle that. And, you know, despite the Knicks shooting 20% from three, they still go out there and beat the Blazers by 23. So that should tell you about uh, their defense tonight. Absolutely. This game felt like watching the old Adrian Peterson Minnesota Vikings where it was just Brunson being AP and then defense, right? You yeah. didn't have the quarterback. You didn't have anybody else to support Adrian Peterson. It was just in the, on the offensive side, it should be – Specific, right? Yeah, like yep. defensively, the Knicks were just on one tonight. Usually, guys, you would expect to give you something like Dante, maybe Josh Harker to give you something. OG was was solid tonight. Gave you a couple of scares, holding his elbow and all the yelps. But yep. it was just the Brunson show, man. It was Brunson's world tonight, and everyone else was, was just living in it. Forty five points, as you said. I mean, you could just saw how he was duping all the Portland Trailblazers <laughs> into fouls, man. Because yeah. 
They're yeah. just too young, man. This is the inexperience of a young team, right? You see Bill was trying to tell these guys like, hey, this is what he's going to do. This is what he's going to be looking to do. I'm sure they yeah. went through that through practice and so forth. But when you when you have it's a savvy guy time. like Jalen Brunson, you you, you got to get years under your belt in order to understand how to defend him. Yeah. But I did like what you said about McBride. And it's just cool to see McBride, man, continue to just get more comfortable running an offense game after game because that's what you're going to need man when it comes to the playoffs you know brunch is going to need some breaks to give to get somebody like mcbride out there just to play defense knock down some threes continue to attack the lane that's all you look from yeah. him as, as a point guard coming off the bench but we're going to need more scoring man just waiting for the guys just to get healthy i mean the bench they did yeah. the best that they could do i mean mcbride being the leader with six points, but you need more out of your bench so that way you can give some of these guys some rest. You know, you're looking at these numbers for the starters, 35, 37, 41, D uh, 37. That's OG, Brunson, Hart, and DiVincenzo that I'm looking at. You just need a little bit more from the bench tonight. But other than that, this was easy. Not necessarily full-on easy sailing, but easy enough because Knicks just were in control the entire time. Yeah, they, they were in control uh, the the entire time for this one, and uh, I'm gonna touch on the bench in a minute. But I've you know I don't I don't want to stare too far from the lead because you know you touch on something in this game, and that was the OG situation. Because was it just me, or did things really change in terms of how you felt about the game, like going into the third quarter on when he's grabbing his elbow, yeah. then on the next possession. They feed him on the cut, and he gets the behind-the-back slam. So I'm like, okay, he's okay. It's a mix of emotions, right? CP. <laughs> then on the next possession, he gets a steal. <laughs> Phil's and runs the break himself and gets a slam. And then on the next possession, he's holding his elbow again going into the timeout. I'm like, what's going on here, man? Are you good? Are you not good? What is going on with OG Ananobi, man? I couldn't be the only one feeling this like, man, I, I you know, What's going on here? He's not on the bench. He's back in the in the locker room. What is going on? But then he still came out and finished the game. Yeah. And that's, for that, man, that's where I'm like, all right, we walk away with you coming out of this game healthy and, and just moving along, right? That's the way I look at it. But the thing is, CP, is that you can still see even moments at the game, like he's not fully extending his arm, like he's leaving it at like, well, it looks to be at like a, I don't know, 75 degree angle. If we're going to use any numbers or whatever further than that, I forget my algebra, man. Well, actually, it's past 90 degrees. Past. Yeah. So, so yeah. One, let's say 110. Sorry, you're, you're right? a ways away from algebra, man. Yeah. Whatever. Look, man. Whatever. No one cares anymore. Yeah, right? No cares. one cares whatever. anymore. That's not my job. Yeah. Anyway, look, he's holding it at not, he, he can't hold it straight out, right? You're seeing that he's like favoring Trouble. it, but yet he can do reverse dunks. He can just, it's like, wait a minute, what is happening today? Should we be taking him out early? Should we yeah. be resting him? And that's where I go to the bench because for tonight, I'm like, okay, could we get that same thing that we got for Brunson when he returned from his knee injury where Brunson played 29 minutes? Could we get somebody to step up just maybe offensively where we don't need OG tonight, but we walk away with OG being healthy, man? I just wonder how they're going to monitor the situation. To me, it just seems like he's just got to get used to the contact, the physical nature of the game after surgery, right? Like, I have everyone after I'm, like, saying, oh, look, OG's got back-to-back -back dunks. Everyone's like, you can't re-aggravate a bone spurt. But even though you can't re-aggravate it, you can just still aggravate, this, like, your your surgery, right? Like, it's still tender. It's still sore. It's still trying to heal. I mean, you just open it up so that way you can do some cleaning on it. So we'll see how he moves move, going forward. But tonight, man, it's just, like, you good against Philly? Yeah. Not tonight where you feel confident. Well, I think the reason I, I did feel confident uh, just in terms of OG's perspective is, is that he did finish the game. And so that's what leads me to think, obviously, I'm not a Twitter doctor. I'm not a doctor in real life. But maybe it's just a soreness thing that he's expected to experience during this time. I don't think the Knicks would be that reckless to have him out there finishing games. And from what we've heard from guests that have been on the show, he's a guy that, you know, he needs to be 100% before he gives it a go. So maybe that's, this why, <laughs> that's why I'm not confident. Because yeah. you can walk away from this game being like, all right, yeah, he got out of this one, the soreness. And what if he's not 100% tomorrow, right? All right, he finished the game today. Cool. Is he going to be 100% tomorrow? Or is he not going to be 100% tomorrow? That's what I don't know. And yeah. between him and Mitchell Robinson, both of these guys are going to have you holding your breath because it's like any little thing, man, right? Whether yeah. it's Mitch hitting the deck or OG with like these obscure injuries, 
it's just weird, man. It's just weird. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not until I continuously see him on the court every single game. Well, I'm like, okay, we we can get past this. I want to be, yeah. I want to see him in the next game, man. I guess it's understandable. Kings. Uh, understandable. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you, boys. CP and Alex on the ones and twos. 105-93. Knicks survive a late Blazer push. What do you guys think, man? Are you concerned about OG Ananobi? Do you think it's just as they say, routine soreness? I, I think uh, the the latter. But as Alex said, let's see what happens on Saturday as the Knicks travel to Sacramento. Because as Tom Thibodeau did say with OG Ananobi, it all depends. At least when he was first coming back, depends on how he would, uh, how the elbow would respond after practice. So, you know, is it sore? Is it not? We'll, we'll have to see. But need, ne- needless to say, he had a good game tonight. <laughs> he, was, he did. Uh, elbow sore, this or not? Uh, he was extremely impactful. As we said, there was it was there was that moment in the third quarter where he's grabbing his elbow, gets the reverse slam, then comes back, steals the ball, gets another dunk. Right? Uh, he's got two. Well, after the, they took the timeout and he comes back in, he's got two drives to the lane where he scores. Then he gets a, uh, a deflection, which leads to a blaze of turnover, which was mm-hmm. a Nick ball. So I think he was a big part in, in terms of, you know, it got a little up and down, especially in, in the second half, late in the third and in moments in the fourth. But I thought, you know, his defense was, was key in terms of them closing the door. So that was a good thing. Absolutely. I mean, look, you saw how he's double teaming, helping to defend against Aiton when, when he was cutting the lane, right? OG's defense is just so important for this team, man. Look, they're 14 and two with the guy on the court. So that should give you an idea of how impactful he is. I get it that we're missing guys like Julius as well. And so that would, and we have to take that in consideration also against teams that were playing like a Portland Trailblazers team, which is very young, inexperienced, not good at all. They're 1946, yeah. right? They're, they're working their way up to be a good team. But still, with OG, you can see the OG effect where defensively, he just takes a lot of the defensive burden and, and puts it on his shoulder, right? He's the lead guy. You yeah. put him on the best opponent, and that's his assignment for the rest of the night. And then offensively, you ask him to fill in when possible, right? Whether it's cutting knocking down threes, no matter what it is, that's what he does. And that's why for me, I, like, because this is a guy who needs to play at a hundred percent. And that's something that has been just out there. That's why when you see him wincing, grabbing the elbow, it goes back between, is this a guy that just needs to play through, through like just the the soreness of his elbow to get back to being a hundred percent, or is he going to go in and out of games because he is not a hundred percent. That's my concern. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough, man. Well, we need the dog at close to 100%, man, to have some success in these playoffs. But, hey, let's see. Good. We'll take the win tonight, feel good about it, and let's see what happens tomorrow, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Salute to all of our franchise channel members in the chat. All of our franchise channel members up late with us. Uh, some of you guys are on the East Coast. You might be on the West Coast. Some might be overseas. I see Dirty Harry BX156 in the chat. Salute to Dirty Harry. Salute to Underground Crypto in the chat, Al. Some franchise channel members. Owen A. Shout out to Owen A. I see Ari from Taiwan. Khalid E. CP, you coming to San Fran this year? I wish, man. I, I would have really have loved to have uh, gotten out there for the Golden State game this year, but uh, not this year. But I will be out there for All-Star, man. All-Star game in San Fran next year. So hmm. they're finally getting it right, Al. Finally getting it right, man. Who who we want to shout out in the chat? Shout out to G five Wee's in the chat. Shout out to our G5. guy Junior Coroma. G five always shout in to, here, man. Shout out to Mr. Don's, yeah. Corey Mitchell. Shout out, shout out to both of you for being franchise yeah. channel members. Uh who else we got? John Talento's always Talento's in here. Talento's in here first. Always did in you here. say uh shout did you shout out Flizzy Flex in here? Flizzy's in here and in, and he's with us at the NBA report and KFTV. So mm-hmm. he's he's rocking with us, man. Shout out to Flizzy Flex for sure. We got our guy John Shin in here as well. John OG Shin saying that OG is at eighty five percent. Oh well, we'll have to see, man. We'll have to see. Shout out to John Shin. Um, on this game as well, you know, I definitely don't want to get into the Partenstein Mitch debate, but I have to here say, we go. no, not not even like again. This is not even about Mitch. Like I'm, I'm very much looking forward to Mitch coming back and seeing how they integrate him into the lineup and how he fortifies his defense. But I just love how Hartenstein flows with the offense, man. It's really nice, isn't it? I I, I just love how he flows with the offense. You know, finding the backdoor cutters. They have a great thing going. They have a great flow with him. 
at the five. And he's just gotten comfortable game after game, day after day, since he's been here. I, you know, I, that's, I, that's, they, they've just, they have to just keep that thing going. And I think they will. There's no reason not to. Even with Mitch coming back, I don't think you can even think about tinkering that lineup at the five position just because, look, when these guys were fully healthy, just think about how crisp that offense was, right? I mean, having a center that can just pass the ball, find guys who are cutting, and just score as well, it, it makes you have to play. It makes you have to honor the entire offense, right? Yeah. And that's kind of the thing with Mitch is that offensively, you know there's only really one thing he can do, which is just get putbacks, be in the dunker spot, and that's easy to phase out. When you have to guard somebody who can get the floater up there, then that means, oh, now you got to extend out. And then when you have to do that, and a guy who can also pass as well as Hartenstein, he can go find anybody because he can pump fake, he can do whatever, and, yeah. and you just see how smooth the offense can run. So I'm with you, man, where Hartenstein should just be in the starting rotation come playoffs. But there is going to be a conversation. I know you don't want to have that conversation yeah. right now, yeah. but there is we going to be that conversation. And it's because he's going to be, you know, looking to get paid. Uh, we saw some of the deals that have already been done. He's going to be making somewhere probably around $18 million annually. And then you got to wonder, is this the guy you want to move forward with? Can you afford to have him and Mitch? You know, you still got Jericho on the books for a, what, another season. You got Precious there who can play some backup five, even though he's been more solid as a backup four in everyone's absence. There, there's going to be a, a big conversation this offseason by the front office, yeah. and rightfully so. And that's the evaluation you got to make, man. Yeah, true, true indeed, true indeed, man. Call us up, guys, 657-383-1509. Get your takes in on tonight's game, uh, on OG, on whatever you guys want to talk about, man. 657-383-1509. Or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord. Uh, Al, before we take the calls, man, be before we get into the calls and the reactions, definitely want to send uh, heartfelt condolences out to the Barrett family, R.J. Barrett mm -hmm. and his family, man. They uh, tragically, R.J.'s little brother, Nathan, passed away on March 12th. Uh, on March 12th, they, Nathan Barrett passed away. And uh, so the news came out today. And so, yeah, we, we just want to send them on behalf of KFTV, man. Heartfelt condolences to the family. Uh, truly a tragedy. I believe he was only 20 years old. So, um, you know. Yeah, again, just heart heartbreaking, very very heartbreaking, man. You know, just my experience with the family, just being around them a few times. I mean, you could just see that they're very tight, tight family, man. Very close family, and they they rally around RJ. And so uh, I can't can't even imagine, you know, the heartbreak and the pain that they're going through right now. So, uh, like I said, man, definitely want to send heartfelt condolences and well wishes to uh to to the Barrett family, man. Truly, truly a tragic situation. Tragedy, man. Thoughts and prayers to the Barrett family. I mean, I, I, I honestly can't even, you know. Yeah. The whole goal is for your children to outlive you, right? And that I, that is so sad, man. And even for RJ to lose a brother, man, a little brother, that I, I can't, I truly cannot imagine. But yeah, thoughts and prayers to that family, bro. Thoughts and prayers. No That's question. Such a tragedy. Big, big time tragedy, man. But um, um, shout out to the Knicks. Before the game, Tibbs had a press conference, and that was the first thing he opened with, uh, sending well wishes on behalf of the org organization. So I thought that was a classy move by the Knicks, and great job mm -hmm. by Tibbs. I mean, you know, RJ was one of us, man. He's still, still a Nick through and through, he, even though um, he's no longer with the team. And like I said, his, his family came up, you know, right in the organization. The lockstep with the organization, man. You go to every game, it's mom, it's dad, it's, it's aunt, it's grandma, it's cousin, whole unit, the, you know, his little niece. So uh, I, I know how, how close that family was, man. And, and like I said, it's just very heartbreaking, very, very heartbreaking for him. So, yeah, yeah, let's send some love out to RJ for sure, man. Yeah, and it's not even, you know, like uh, RJ being one of us, you know, helping turn this franchise around much respect to him in doing that yeah. but it's more than that see because at the end of the day we're all people and it doesn't matter that he was a nick it doesn't matter anything that that we have a bigger connection because he was a nick but just being a person like if you're a fan of the nba it, it just hurts to see somebody have yeah. to go through this pain and torture man it's you're losing a loved one at a very young age you know he was just 20 years is 
there's nothing, man. You and I've both been there. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's so still so early. You don't even know much. Yeah. You're still just trying to figure things out. And you're just getting like situated in life, right? You're making it through high school and all those things. You're starting to figure out like what you want to do in life. And now to have that all cut short, it's sad, man, because he could, you know, we're talking about a future. We don't even know what his future could have been, man. Yeah. A lot of what ifs. A lot, a lot of what ifs, man. But yeah, man, young, young soldiers. Shout out to RJ for sure. All right. Uh, okay. Well, let's get to the phones. 559. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? 559. Yo, my yep. name is Dan. I'm calling in from Portland, just leaving the game. Dan, how are you, man? Were you with that Knicks faithful behind Breen and them? It was it was loud in there, man. Knicks Nation was in there. I happy, was man. behind that. Yeah, yeah, I was with the Knicks faithful. I this was my first NBA game yeah. I have ever been to. My wow. from Pennsylvania pops was from the Bronx. So I went to a ton of Yankees games, but That's never dope. went to a football or an NBA game. So I got to say hi to Monica McNutt. Nice. Took hands with Mike Breen, but best of all, I took my cap off for Tibbs, and he and he waved at me. That nice, was, that was, nice. So that wait, so wait, did stop. you did you pick? Did you circle Portland and go to the game, or do you live out there now? I live here now. I live in Washington. So, oh, okay. Uh, I've been tracking these tickets since since they came out in September or whatever. Um, uh, had my eye on these seats right behind the Nick bench. They dropped uh, day of the game. They 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 were cut in half. So nice. Me and the wifey, we uh, we we played hooky. We we took the four hour <laughs> drive from from northern Seattle. Yeah, work can wait, and, man. Uh, Nicks are important. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, man. So it was the vibes were immaculate. The vibes were immaculate. Yo, what what was Brunson like, man? Up close and personal, cooking him for forty five. What was Captain Clutch like, up close and personal, man? Oh, serious as always. He's just all business, man. <laughs> yeah, He's just yeah. all business. Yeah, he was cooking him, man. The yeah, man. Good. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I, the the great the game was great. Uh, this is my first time calling in. Long yeah. time listener. I always thought I'd have more to say, but I'm just uh, on cloud nine after hey, that win. So call, call back the anytime, vibes were man. Great. Yeah, man. Go Knicks. Thank yeah. you, Pete. Thanks, Alex. Love the show. Yeah, man. Good, great story. Glad, glad you called in. And yeah, call back anytime, man. Thanks, guys. All right, so I got a guy from Portland now. Let's dope. There we go. There we go. Gets to see JB drop forty five, playing a little hooky, as he said. Yeah. So there you I go, like man. That. Priorities. That's what I'm talking about, man. Forget work. Man. Seems like something that you would do, CP. You Absol- know, play hooky, go to go to a Knicks game. Absolutely. Just chill. In my former life, yes. I, I can admit former that life. now. You know? In my former life, absolutely, man. Former so. wife. Okay, please. <laughs> hey, last minute. Hey, by the way, I'm going to the game. Alex, do you host? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that that's all part that's all part of the job, man. All part of the job. You saw KFTV after dark. I was in the garden, you know, just shaking hands with the people, talking to the people. Then shaking I segue hands, kissing babies. Yeah, yeah then, I know what you do. Then I, I segue to um to, to you and Jake. I say, take it away, Al. No, you would see K. <laughs> See, yeah, like you know, it's like I like Channel Seven. You, it's like a segue, segment, segue. Back to you, and Alex. now, <laughs> back to me, <laughs> and now back to KFTV post game. Now nah, Brunson was cooking, and um, you know the way you were saying that that he was uh, like setting up the port the young Portland defenders. I put out there on Twitter. I was like, the way he moves is like a boxer, especially when you watch the slow mos of his forays into the paint. Mm. Like that one where he, he had three and ones tonight, and there was one where he did two inside-out dribbles with his with his left hand, then swung it right and did like that hard and rip-through. He's, he's nice mm. at the rip-throughs now. And then got the and one. Like that was such like a boxer setup combined with the footwork. It, 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 you knew it was going to be a long night for Portland, man, as soon as he, he set the tone early. Masterclass. Who is it? I mean, Scoot has been struggling this season. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these names, I'm not even like, you got, uh, who is this? You got Chris Murray out there who's still young. This is, He's a rookie. And most of these guys I don't even know on this roster. Yeah. Outside, yeah. Like, you know, I know DeAndre Ayton. He's obviously a, a name stay in the league. He played pretty well tonight. Got his yeah, seventh yeah. double double, which he was talking about trying to get. You got Matisse Thibel, but everybody else, man, it's like, uh, who? Like, I, like, Unless you really tune into this team, yeah, you don't really know everybody else on this roster. And then that's just – if you're Brunson, you're seeing guys who are trying to make a name for themselves or it's a young team, 
You go at them, man. Right that, at that's them. That's it. That, same thing that you do with Detroit. Same thing that you do with the Spurs. You you show their inexperience. I think that there's a lot of talk on the broadcast, and, and great job by uh, by Monica and Breen. Monica McNutt was the color analyst with Mike Breen tonight. I thought there was a lot of talk about his strength, but like I said, in terms of how he moves like a boxer, and then his his the way that he anticipates drawing the offensive foul, his IQ doesn't get talked about a lot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just his anticipation skills, his court awareness, like that doesn't get talked about. And and you know, rightfully so. It's his physical attributes. It, he's so skillful. His footwork and and you know his physical ability, but also his, his IQ's got to be talked about, man. Super sharp, razor sharp. You know, they always talk about for Halliburton how he sees the game from a facilitator yeah. aspect, right? Like, oh well, he can he knows how to set the all, the defense up where he can think three steps ahead to get to the pa- get the pass that he wants to get. For Brunson, two different guards, obviously. When it comes to Brunson being just an offensive hub, to your point, that just takes time, man. Right? Because you got to think yeah. that, that calculation, what he's doing, like he's reading, like. The, his opponent's stance and understanding like what side is their weak side, right? Yeah. What side do they want to attack? Like how are they, how are they reacting throughout the game? Like there's a pace to that in order to get to that level. And I, I think it was Kyrie who's talking about it and just, just breaking it all down. Like, all right, how's the guy yeah. guarding me? Uh, which direction does he like to go? What side is he favoring? Right. Uh, what are his tendencies? You know, there's a lot of stuff that you got to do prior before the game as well to understand what players like to do on the defensive side. But there's a lot of studying that goes into that. And, for Brunson, that I mean, are we shocked? I mean, he even said on the roommates yeah. show podcast where it's just he's happy to be part of a team where it's just all about business. It's all yeah. about basketball. Yeah. Right. Well, ball is when they say ball is life, this is truly yeah. the yeah. organization that ball is life. Well, so the, it's to the point where, where we do these post game shows and you know, I almost get excited about talking about everybody else because with him, it's like, yo, it's every night, man, he's just killing. Every night he's killing, man. It's the same thing. It's the same arsenal. It's unstoppable. And when he's in his bag, it's it's incredible to watch, man. It, it absolutely it's, is. It's tough because, you know, it's not – because we cover this team for all 82 games and then some, right? You know, with, with game of the week, play-by-play, weekly, yeah. and stuff like that. You can only say so much about Jalen Brunson. And that's yeah. why when it goes to the national level, that's why we have that gripe where, you know, you don't always talk about – every single team, every single player on a day-to-day basis. But when they do talk about somebody on this, on that day-to-day basis, it should yeah. be the guys that are shining and Brunson's deserving of that recognition. You mentioned Kyrie, you know, side note on Kyrie. Did you see that clip going around uh, where it's like they have current players, they're asking current players who their top five most skilled in the NBA are? You see I that? saw that. You see that clip? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that clip. I didn't even get to yeah. watch it, but I know the clip that you're talking about. I actually have it saved for later. Nine out of ten got Kyrie. Right now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Top top five skill right now. Not surprised. Not surprised. <laughs> Dude. Not surprised. The fact that he, we're talking about a guy who was practicing on a backboard that had yeah. the box cut out, uh-huh. and he had to figure out every different angle to get a layup. I mean, are we shocked? Are we yeah, shocked? Yeah. I mean, even watching him today, just he's probably the most unguardable player next to AI that I've seen. Yeah. Like at the guard position. Like yeah. I don't there's not many guards that I could think of that you can just keep a body in front of. Like Steph Curry, because of his handles, he's another guy. Like when he was peak, peak wanting to use his handles and shake and bake, that's another guy you could put up there. But yeah. on a day like Year in year out basis, like Kyrie is up there with just his skill, man. True indeed, man. Uh, back to let me load some people up on the Discord. Uh, let me get John Shin in here. John Shin, John Shin on the Discord. We got to go rapid fire too, man. It is late, man. So rapid fire for everybody, please. John Shin on the Discord. Hey, what's up, guys? Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, how are you guys? Good, good. Long Rapid time. Rapid fire. Long time. I haven't, I haven't heard from you guys in a uh, well. I haven't spoken yep. a little bit. Yeah, we've been heard from First... us. We hear every night, man. <laughs> You're like <laughs> I haven't heard from you guys. We always hear, man. I'm listening to you guys on my ride home from. Uh, excuse me, either my ride home from work or either going to work. So, nice. Anyway, um, 
uh, it's something about OG. Um, I don't think he's 100% healthy. We all saw that. Um, I think we, a lot of people are a little, you know, eh, about what's going on. He's not 100% healthy. He's getting there. He needs yeah. reps. He needs time to be ready for the playoffs. But something about Randall, right? Mm -hmm. um, that he's not coming in right now, I think actually shows um, he's not ready to go that he's not getting his reps in right now. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is, wait a couple of weeks, guys. If he's not in the lineup in two weeks, it's 19, 18 games, 17 mm -hmm. games away. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's when we can think about trouble, about the playoffs especially. especially. So mm -hmm. um, OG, everybody needs to chill. He's He just got off from surgery. It's going to hurt a little bit, but mm -hmm. he's healthy enough to play against... 250 pound people it's going to be okay and otherwise than that mm -hmm. thank you guys for being on at one o'clock in the morning man I'm, I'm wide awake because i just got up from work I appreciate let's go you. let's go man john chin appreciate that appreciate the consideration man shout out to john chin man a loyal loyal franchise channel supporter and understands appreciates what we do here at Knicks fan tv out 1 a.m we got about uh how many people we got in the chat tonight man 1400 cp so, wow 14 14 salute man salute i overestimated how many people we would have tonight hit the share button everybody let's let's get some more folks we got 1400 let's yeah, go yeah. hit the like make sure you guys are hitting the thumbs up on free boys make sure you guys are hitting the share button and also subscribe to the channel man make sure you guys are doing that cp and alex on the ones and twos just two degenerate knicks fans breaking down the knicks versus the portland trailblazers on a bum night but hey, at, somebody's got to do it. At 1 a.m. At 1 a.m. But somebody's got to do it, man. Oh, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Salute to Talento, man. Definitely salute to Talento. Yeah, how many people do you know are taking a nap outside of CP and myself to get yeah. ready for this game? Yeah. How many? Not too many, Al. All right, what else, man? Um, Salute to our sponsors, Al. Definitely want to pick up our sponsors of the night. Salute to Ginger Hales, the household name in Ginger Lemonade, man. Salute to our sponsors at Ginger Hales, man. From the classic to the exotic flavors, each bottle is packed with a zing of real ginger and the zest of fresh fruits. Use code KFTV at checkout for an exclusive 15% off discount on your first order. Salute to my guys at Ginger Hales, man. Salute to my guys at Ginger Hales for sure. Okay. All right, let's go back to the phones. Rapid fire, folks. We're loading people up on the Discord, getting them in there. Okay, let's see. Um, AB positive. AB positive on the Discord. Go ahead and unmute your mic. AB positive. AB positive. Going once. All right. They're not ready. So we'll go to the phones now. Oh. What does that stand for? Alec Burke's positive? <laughs> AB positive. Are you there? Oh, that was that was John Shin. John Shin's there. Okay, we don't have AB positive, Al. So in the meantime, 646 on the phone. 646. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? 646. All right. I guess they're going. All right. Uh, 929, we're going to you on the phones. 929, what's your name? Where are you calling in from? All right, what's going on, y'all? CP, what's good? What's good, man? What's your name? Where are you calling in from? All right, it's Styles from the BX, man. Yo, what's good, uh, Styles? I want to talk about tonight's game, man. Yeah. All right, I just want to talk about tonight's game. My team, Jalen Brunson, go for 45. That's yep. my boy, Big Body Brunson. Yep. Yeah, and uh, definitely, man. Uh, I think we need a better point guard, man. Honestly, McBride been doing his thing, but I think we need somebody to step up, man. They, they need to get Shake Milton some minutes, man. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, he might get it, man. Appreciate the call, man. Um, Yeah, he might get it because, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's Burke's Hive is just uh, it's out of business right now, man. It's just out of commission. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's not happening, man. You sound a little sad, CP. Nah, you know, uh, 
Yeah, you know uh, what, 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 you got like a grin over trunk. here. You're... Put him in the what? <laughs> Put him in the trunk. I mean, bro, my man turned into a human uh, uh, blooper reel. He went from the human highlight reel to the human blooper reel. CP. I, this, is, this is nothing to talk about, man. Stick this guy on the bench. He didn't even come back in the game. Four straight possessions in the second quarter. He's bumming it up. Straight up blooper reel. He's falling on the floor. He's yucking up shots. I, I'm with the guy. Let me see what Shake, Shake Milton's doing out there, man. Ooh, here we go. We're going to ask him for some Shake Milton over Burks. I, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Both him and Bogdan, bro, they look slow. They look washed. They look washed. Both I of those remember guys not too washed, long bro. ago. It was about a week and a half ago where I said, oh, McBride took Burks' spot in the playoff rotation. And you're like, oh, give it until April. Oh, well, nah, you still got until April March, for CP. It's March 15th, man. I've seen enough, man. Both of these guys are looking <laughs> cooked. They're looking cooked. Thank man. you. They're looking absolutely cooked. For seeing the light. But, anyway, I mean, this guy is getting less than what my guy, Obi Toppo, would get last year. Yeah, CP. He's I'm, getting he got four Tibbs. minutes. I'm with Tibbs. We're trying to win out here. My man's going one on five every possession. Like, what are you doing, bro? Pass the ball first and foremost. Start with that. Let's start with a simple pass, and you move and you relocate somewhere else. Every time he's like, he's he's it's showtime. It's, it's showtime at the Apollo. Like it's Harlem Globetrotters. Like, bro, what are you doing, man? I'm I'm oh, tired, man. bro. Four straight possessions. He looks like a blooper reel, man. I, I, that, that was it for me, man. That, well, that I said it's like it. a cartoon out there. It's like a cartoon. Like, what are you doing, bro? I can't even believe it. He does not even look like a competent basketball player right now. Why do, I don't understand what is going on. Detroit, man. It's really that yeah, bad. Yeah, it must have been. It must have been because both of these guys just feel like they can come into the game and just they just look out of sync. They, they don't what? fit anything that this team is doing right now. What was Monty Williams doing over there for practice? I need to know. We need answers, CP. I, I, you know, they had they had free reign, green lights at Detroit. Do your thing. Win the ball game. You can't do that here. We have an order. We have a structure. You understand? Like, But that should show you how good this Knicks culture is right now. Because everybody is still falling in line. Everybody is playing their role. Where, yeah, you would you would love for these guys to, like, come along for the ride. But, fortunately, the Knicks have role players. Oh, like they, they enjoyed the ride, CP. They are going to be on that bench enjoying the well, ride. Well, yes. <laughs> but I'm saying, but fortunately, you have more depth in McBride, in Precious. Guys, and, you know, Josh Hart. You know, we didn't even talk about Hart tonight. 15 boards for Hart. Um, you, you you know, you you have guys like, they you plug these guys in, they don't fit anything that these guys are doing out there. They are lost. Lost, lost, no confidence. Bogdanovich is slow as hell. He's going to get picked on in the playoffs. And Burks right now is not even playable. God awful. So The only, the only, the only you, did you hear CK's uh, explanation for, for Boyan, though? What? He said that we can't lump Boyan and Burks together because Burks' horrible play is dragging down Boyan because they're always on the court together I mean, for the most part. I guess part. you could say, but at, at least he can play a little bit of defense. Bogdanovich, uh, the, the guy's in, the Matador in Matador D. Between... Put him in the, the trunk. The Put him in the what? To see. Put him in the trunk. And so forth, man. The, the matches we need to see, CP... Boyan versus Fournier. Boyan oh, I'd, uh, I'd versus almost, Ingles. I'd almost rather have Fournier back, man. Wow. I'm honest with you, bro. Honestly, it's a Spider-Man meme all over again. So I can't even say Grimes because Grimes is still bumming it up in Detroit. I mean, I miss – you know, Grimes is still my guy. I, 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 hopefully he comes back and, you know, becomes something. I don't have faith in that he'll do it in Detroit. He's got to go somewhere else. Go to Denver or something. You know, really be bro. You, you get Grimes out of Detroit because yeah. it is not looking great right now. Go to, I mean, he was doing go fine. Denver. He was do, keep in mind he was doing fine when he was on the Knicks. Like when he started to get off, come off the bench, you know, and then that we got OG and Anobi. He yeah. started to seems like he was figuring things out. Even though it was every other game, he had the one great quarter against the Knicks, and now it's just like, look, these are the last couple of games for for Grimes. He went one of six from the field, one of eight, and one of six. Jokic. That's five, six, and two points. That. Jokic, uh, Jokic, uh, he'd get Grimes right. 
he'd be like a little Christian Braun over there. And you got KCP, yeah. KCP, you know, he's going to be out of there soon. If I was Denver, I'd, I'd try to get Grimes. You got to go to a place with a good culture, man, because it's yeah. just like, what was it? Burks was out there for what? A season and a half, right? Yeah. Wow. It's, I guess that's too long for anybody to be out in Detroit <laughs> playing basketball. He's already out there for too long. <laughs> He's already out there for too long, man. But you know what? You know, talking about Grimes, I'm really uh, – I'm going to be interested in, in this draft. I'm going to be interested in this draft for the Knicks. We got two picks. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, everybody, oh, the draft, they're, they're no good players. They say that every year. And every year you see guys that can come out and play a role. Look at Peyton Watson. Look, look what he's doing for Denver right now. That right there. You know, look at Herb Jones. Look at, um, you know, Troy Murphy's up there. He was around lottery. You know, they can and, and look at the Knicks' track record for finding late late gems, right? McBride right now is a sole survivor, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna be looking forward to it, man. Like we're gonna have the draft series back, gonna have two picks in the first round as of right now. So I'd like to find a a uh, you know a Peyton Watson or or a Kamara even. You know, Br- Brunson was cooking them, but I like Kamara's prospects. Like if, the, if the draft were to start today, CP, the Knicks would have Dallas's pick, which is currently 18th, okay. and then their pick at 22. So solid positioning for first-rounders, the 18th and 22. I mean, those are yeah. the spots, especially 22 is where the Knicks have drafted in the past before. They got both quickly and Grimes at 25. Keep that in mind. Yeah. But yeah. to your point about this year's draft, yeah, everyone's talking about there's not a consensus number one overall pick. Who could it be? But the one thing everyone keeps talking about is that this is a good draft for getting role players. So if you're looking for a role right. player to add to the team, this is that draft. Yeah. And so the Knicks, look, they got their guys in Randall and Brunson, Brunson right now, right? OG, those are your top three guys for this team. Are you, you, you could always look for that next superstar. There's no one who's never not looking for that next superstar to be a Giannis, Jokic, or whoever. But with those guys, you could say, okay, we can – Continue to fill out the rest of the roster looking for role players. And if somebody develops into that, that will be cool. Yeah. True, true indeed, man. All right, let's go to the Discord. Tyronto, Tyronto on the Discord. Uh, I'll mute your mic. Tyronto. Tyronto going once. All right. Don't think we got Tyronto, so we'll click him out of there. 914, let's go to YO. 914, what's your name? Where are you calling in from? Can you hear me? Yep, Latin Clay. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? Let's go. Is a second time caller. Yeah, uh, I called. Uh, what game? I, don't, I forgot what game I was talking about. But I asked you yeah. guys, the uh, Celtics or Bucks, which one do you take? Yes. Um. So I just want to say that uh, we have to stop rapping on Tom Thibodeau as the head coach. He yeah. is our best head coach. Since Jeff uh, Van Gundy, I don't mm-hmm. want to say Mike Woodson because his tenure was really short lived. Yep. Uh, I do want to say that we are dominating every team that we should dominate. That's something you have to put respect on. Yeah. Um, the cast that they put around for Tom Thibodeau, uh, we got dogs. We got rid of people who didn't have it in them. Yep. Yeah, we saw glimpses. Yeah, we missed Grimes. Yes, we missed Toppin. But let's be real. They have a larger role. It may be uh, a few minutes more, mm-hmm. um, but they have larger roles in these other teams that they've been traded to, and they're 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 playing basically the same how they've been playing mm-hmm. when they were in New York. Yeah. Um. All I got to say, all, yeah. All I basically got to say is that Tom Thibodeau, he is our okay. coach, and uh, we got to put more respect right. on him. Pre- appreciate like the I call, said, man. We we just gonna run through, man. It was rapid fire now. It's one a.m. So everybody, rapid fire with the takes, man. We we get what you say though. You know what I'm saying? Tib- Tibbs is a guy. I mean, look, rightfully so. Um, as I plug in my phone charger here, Tibbs is the guy for the job. You're right over there. <laughs> no, I, I can't get this in there. Um, no, look, Tibbs is doing his job. It is what it is. Knicks have good players, man. That, that also helps, right? When you when you bring in a Brunson, you bring in a Hart, you bring in DiVincenzo, you bring in OG. Good things happen when you get guys that uh, understand what the coach wants out there. For I don't sure. think I mean, it was necessarily is... a Grimes thing. I think Grimes is more of a future play. I, but Obi didn't have a fit here. Yeah, I could agree with that. Where Grimes was like the yeah. 
ideal Tom Thibodeau guy. He played defense, he shot threes. I mean, he did all that to a T last year. I mean, I'll go back to what he did against Jimmy Bowler. I'm sure Tom Thibodeau loves that moment. Why he fell out of Tom Thibodeau's favor, that's a question I'd like to know. I uh, will never get that answer. Uh, but for Obi, Obi's more of an offensive guy. That's why he's thriving out in Indiana. But I would say that, you know, I wouldn't say that they couldn't make it. I mean, all those guys, it's tough. I mean, for they all had their own issues, why they weren't going to get enough playing time and so forth. But yeah. Tibbs has definitely set a culture here. 973, what's your name? Where are you calling it from? Is that me? Yep. This is you loud and clear. Rapid fire. Let's go. All right. Um, good game tonight. Um, I really appreciate uh, you guys for the good content. Yep. And also, also, um, yeah, let's just keep it rapid fire. Um, my question is, is that how long is Tibbs going to keep Burks and Bo on, Bo yeah. on, on the roster? Like, how, how long yeah. do you think he's going to? Have patience with these guys. Yeah, I mean, I mean, more so, more so in the rotation. I get what you're saying. I mean, they're in there to, until until you get reinforcements at the very least. I mean, there's not that many options on the bench. Yeah, I guess if you want to check, shake Milton, sure. Um, but for right now, Tibbs is showing you he's he's cool with what they got. You know, Burks is not even playing. Bogdanovich is, isn't really getting that many minutes. So, I think their play will be contingent. Their minutes will be contingent upon how how well they play. You play well, you get more minutes. If not, they got other guys. Yeah, there's break. nothing more to add to that. What's that? There's nothing more to add to that. I mean, yeah. you see, like, Burks was, let's go back to when Burks was here in 2021, and he was playing point guard. Tibbs relied on him so much. Right. He's now back here, and Tibbs gave him that leeway. It started off with, like, 15, 20 minutes, and now, look, it's down to four minutes, four or five minutes tonight. And gave my opportunity, man. Just bumming it up. Coach wants to win. So, six four six. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? Uh, this is Frank. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Frank, what's up? Okay, uh, uh, love you guys. Show. Um, Thanks. Just real quick, I'd like to give a shout out to my son. He's up at Wagner College. They okay. they just clinched the NCAA tournament. So All I right. just want to give a quick does shout he, out. Does he there. play for them, or he just go? He just and, uh, goes to school there. No, no, he goes to school there, but he he's friends with all the guys on the basketball team. And uh, my question is, uh, we have 16 games left. As far as Julius Randle goes, how many games mm-hmm. would you think he needs? to play to get ready for the playoffs. We need to come back with five games left, six games left. What do you think? I mean, uh, to be honest, I don't have a number on it, man. You know, I don't have a number on it. It, it, Like, there's so many variables and so many questions um, when he comes back. Like, is he healthy? Can he take a hit? How will he respond when he takes a hit? How does he feel after he goes through a game? You know, that's that's the first part is is physical. And then, then you can get to... You know, um, is, how is he playing? Like, I, I, it's it's not it's there's really no clear timetable. Ten games will be all right. You don't know. Okay, all right. Appreciate appreciate the call, man. Go ahead, Al. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's such a hard answer because we're not the doctors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we can like we've gone back and forth saying you know. Ideally, he gets five games back in until I get into some rhythm. We can go back and forth, but like to know how much he will need in particular, only the doctors and the training staff will know that. Right. But I would just say I would like to see Randall back on the court prior to the playoffs because I, he's a guy that needs to get in rhythm. And he yeah. shouldn't be getting in rhythm when it's the playoffs. Yeah. True, true story, man. Trying to get in rhythm. Yes, he should be in rhythm in the playoffs, but trying um, to get into rhythm. That's my That's my point. I'm trying to – okay, here, here's the Ian Begley quote here. Uh, salute to my guy, Ian Begley. Uh, let me get to his his comments on the Randall injury. Here's here's Ian from our show yesterday on the putback with Ian Begley. Here he is. Reference the injury, CP. We're just going to do a quick rundown on those. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, pretty positive. Tom Thibodeau said last night that he should be cleared for on-court contact soon. Julius Randle, a little bit different, has not been cleared yet for on-court contact. 
doing controlled contact where you kind of know what the move is and you're able to prepare for that contact, but it's not live. It's not unpredictable. He's been sitting kind of in that spot for a little while now. And, and we mentioned it earlier in the week. It's, it's led to some, some concern as to why it hasn't happened yet, but obviously the Knicks are going to be cautious there. Randall is going to be cautious there. I haven't spoken to anyone who would have a, a good read on this thing who said, hey, you know, it's unlikely he comes back. And people think he's going to come back. Just a matter of, of when and how he deals with that contact once he is back on the court. Uh, obviously, you get Ananobi back uh, last night, and, and he looks good. So that's kind of where we are with the All right, so nobody knows, man. But, you know, I told, I told you, bro. I'm sure. No, 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 no. Don't I'm sure the Knicks surprised. know. They're just playing. Don't be surprised. They're being coy. <clears throat> Don't be surprised. But, but I told you, bro. Don't be surprised. Knicks are being coy. That's how I'm reading this. As. Look, I they mean, know. <sighs> they have. They have the information. They don't want anybody else to know. You know, it's that gamesmanship so. stuff. I hope so. Remember, Tib said he he's he's still not cleared for physical contact yet. We got 16 games left, or seven, 16, 16 games left. Still not clear for physical contact, bro. So. What are you thinking? I just feel like, it, I just feel like because of his risk of re-injury, that they're just going to wait until playoffs to test it. That's just my theory. I'm putting my tinfoil hat on. Because of the way that he plays, and there's so much that has to like go right for him, I just don't see them taking that risk in the regular season. And you think that's a good idea? That's the only I that that might be the only option. You know what Man. I mean? He's still that's not tough. still not clear for physical contact, bro. Like you know, how long did it take when when Obi got OG got cleared for physical contact? What was that about a week before he got back on the court? Maybe five days. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's. Different. I mean, his injury is much different. Much though. different. Much different. So right, his injury is much different. His injury was fixed after surgery. Yeah, he's also a different player where he wants to be a hundred percent. Remember well, that? That's right. Randall's okay with not being a hundred percent. We know this. Right. right. So I don't know. I guess the question I'd go to is like, who's doing more of the protection, the doctors or is it Julius? Because I think Julius would be out there if he could. Yeah. If it's more of the team saying, you know, we don't want to lose him prior to playoffs again. I get that. But once again, he's a rhythm player. He needs to get into rhythm. You know, you're going to risk that in playoffs. I mean, right now, like the way you... they did this last season with, they did, with him with the and ankle. the Cavaliers, man. With and the like, ankle. They did it last with year. With the ankle. And like, well. <laughs> right? They did it last year. There's precedence here, man. Is it like, do you go for, okay, let's get him into a rhythm and then risk him not even getting to April? Like, that, like I guess my question is, because my question is this. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not an orthopedic. I have no idea what's going on in this situation. That this is these are just my questions. Put it on the tinfoil hat at 1:26 a.m. on the East Coast. It, between now and the time that he does come back, how much more is he going to heal? When knowing that surgery is still an option in the off season, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is he really going to heal that much more in the, over the next two weeks? Let's say at the very least. I get that. There's a like I would. That's the stuff we don't know, right? Yeah. That's, so this that's is where it's like this, this is where high. it comes down to pain tolerance. Like, what is his pain tolerance? And Tibbs well, mentioned it, that. It, Tibbs, Tibbs mentioned that as well. Yeah, it comes down to pain tolerance. It comes down to what the team thinks. Like, they're trying to gauge it too. They're trying to keep him fresh to get back on the court, do his thing. Like we're seeing him put up jump shots and so forth. He's shooting, right? He's been yeah. shooting. He's been shooting for for a month or or maybe more. Yeah. It's tough, man. It's tough. I'm going to ask you this, though. Do you think he gets the injury-prone moniker because this is now two 
This would be two postseasons. Yeah. Where he's now not going to be at 100%. No, I just think it's bad luck, man. I just think it's bad luck, bro. It's bad luck? Okay. I really do. It's just bad luck. You know, outside of him breaking his leg is for a rookie year. He's been a fairly durable player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the ankle thing was just everybody, anybody could tweak an ankle. Brunson's tweaked yes. an ankle last year. His was just more severe. But then he did it again. You know, mm-hmm. the, shoulder, the shoulder thing, I think that could happen to anybody. So, but but it's it's very unlucky, and it's unfortunate because it's going to be another postseason where you're going to be you're going to be asking what if by the end of it in terms of him because I I just don't see there's any way where he can come back and be who he is who he was and he's not a good he's he's not a good shooter he's not a natural shooter like that. I know. This is why this was the best. This was his best. This is the best version of him, man. That was the best version of him. This is the best version of him, which is why it's, you know, you hope that he could come back and play that same way, that same that same style of physical brand of basketball and Can't get downhill. It's like, and, Mello, it's like Mello said, bro, that, that adjustment is going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. A lot of people are crapping so on the ex- that. So then, so should we just brace ourselves then for like mm-hmm. lowering? Should we just all lower our expectations for the playoffs then? I have. I don't have any expectations for him. Uh, him personally, yeah. Yeah, I don't because I we have no idea. But to to but to think that for, that he's just going to come back knowing that he needs he's going to need surgery in the off season that he's just going to come back and be all star Randall. I don't see it because this is the thing, CP. Everyone. No, I won't say everyone, because many people have been saying that, you know, Nick's healthy, they're a juggernaut, they're a problem, they can yeah. compete with the Celtics and make the Celtics go the distance, a seven-game series, right? If that's that could potentially be an Eastern Conference Finals matchup. And so if that is predicated on not only having Brunson healthy and doing Brunson things, you also need Randall healthy yeah. and doing Randall things. So yeah. if Randall's not going to be healthy, and then we already have the history of him underperforming in the playoffs, whether it be, you can say, not enough guys first year, right? It was Derrick Rose and Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett, and that was just not enough to help Randle. You can say that last year it was his ankle injury and that he wasn't able to be that guy that he was throughout the regular season. Now you're talking about the shoulder injury, which heavily impacts how he plays the game. So if that's the case, should we lower our expectations saying, you know, this team currently slated season to end today. They're the four seed. They're in the playoffs. Are you expecting yeah. them to get out of round one uh, against who would be the match would be the Orlando Magic? Are you expecting them to get past the second round? Because, you know, regardless of his injury, there is still an expectation for this team saying they got to continue to shine and perform, right? Yeah. Like if you're James Dolan, you got to say, well, we, you know, we made this trade for Burks and and Boyan, we we got OG and Anobi. I get that Randall's our second best guy on this team, and we got to rely on him. Yeah, but we still got to go out there and perform. Yeah, for I I get that, but I I don't think there's there's any added pressure like that trade. That trade wasn't an all in trade. You know what I mean? Like they mm-hmm. they're not under the same pressure that like a Phoenix Suns would be under. Or I'm not saying Phoenix Suns. I'm not saying like championship or bust. But I'm still saying like. Should we lower the expectation saying, all right, should we just forget what everyone forget the conversation of this team could be Eastern Conference Finals bound because you need a healthy Julius Randle? Should we forget the expectation of just should we just lower the expectation saying, you know what, this team may not even make the second round if we don't have a healthy Randle? Like those are that's what I'm asking you. No, I don't I don't necessarily think that at all. Right? It's not to say that well if they you know, if if he's not gonna be healthy, they have no shot. Like, anything is happen can po- is possible in the playoffs depending on matchups and how these guys play. Right? Like if DiVincenzo's out there you know, firing, if McBride's out there being consistent, if Hart's being Hart and Brunson's being Brunson, like the way that they defend and they're physical, they're gonna be a tough challenge. Right? But the the I think conventional wisdom would, would tell you that you need at least two bona fide scorers to go into the playoffs with. And so that's why that's why Julius Julius has to you need him to be close to him, or or else you're relying on 
cons- role players for consistency, which is going to be a lot tougher. Which, hey, well, you this never is know. Why, right? this, is, this is why I'm asking the question because for me, like, if you're, giving, if you're saying that we're not going to get 100% Randall, maybe we can do the same thing like last year, right? You can get by round one. Yeah. As you saw with Randall being hampered by injury, as you saw against Miami, much different because was he got re-injured in game four or five against the Cavs? They I won think it was five, five, right? So, he, yeah, it was five. I think it was five. He got re-injured yeah. in game five, right? Yeah, so yeah. you talk about he missed game one against Miami, came back in game two. He had good numbers, but you could see that he wasn't playing to the same standard. And then we saw how the rest of the series went on. That's where I'm like, yeah. So if he's around for round one, we could potentially do the same thing because you still have to honor him because he's on the court. You just hope that he doesn't get re-injured because if he doesn't get re-injured, maybe he can work that confidence and play that same right. style of game. Like, you know, right now, I mean, looking at the standings, hey, here we are, fourth seed. Fourth seed. You got an easy one tonight in Portland. Sacramento won, though, although it won't be easy, they've, they've been an up-and-down team. Now, this defense is going to get tested now because, uh, you know, they've, they've gotten off in the last four games and playing trash teams. Like, let's just be real. So, in terms of offense, in terms of, like, that Philly offense has been struggling, especially without Embiid. They played them twice. Orlando's offense has been no no good. Uh, Portland offense, obviously no good. So, like, Sacramento is going to be a little bit better. That's going to be much more of a challenge in terms of how they handle Sabonis and Fox. You know, you got Monk, who's the wild card. He can get off the bench. You know, that that McBride-Monk matchup, or, you know, it might be hard, or DiVincenzo and Monk, that's going to be an interesting matchup on Saturday as well. So they're going to be tested. But, again, a winnable game, a winnable game. So they're one up on the Magic in fourth, still one up, two and a half up on the Pacers, three up on the Sixers. So they're, they're still right there, man. They're, they're still right there holding it down. That, but what I'm saying is as long as they're doing that, I, I, I can't see them rushing them. Now, I guess you could say if they're still, you know, being competitive and holding their spot in the East, that you can go into these playoffs feeling a little confident because they're knocking down teams, right? Yeah. And they're not even fully healthy. Right. That That's what I think. You know, later on in the trip will get difficult, but at least between, you know, this one tonight was an was a easy one to get. And Saturday, I think, is still winnable. You come back home two and two. That's good. You come back home three and one. That's even better. Man, three and one. That's that's huge. It's even better. And you know Miami, who <clears throat> again, this is why in Tankathon, like you can't really you can't really go off a of strength of schedule. Miami, who has a second easiest schedule according to strength of schedule, is still in eighth. And they lost to the Wizards. Remember, they lost to the Wizards earlier this week. Mm-hmm. So, just never know, man. Look, I mean, that, that that strength of schedule is just calculated based on wins and losses by remaining opponents. So yeah, yeah. it's not going to be the most accurate. Obviously, anybody can lose to anybody in the NBA, right? That's That shouldn't be any surprise. I mean, we almost <laughs> almost lost to the Detroit Pistons, man. So let's not forget those games. But yeah. I don't know, man. It's just the whole Randall conversation is very murky. Yeah. You just want to come back, and it's just it just stinks because – we saw this team what it could be for through nine games, right? Mm-hmm. Like we saw what it could be. We saw we, we got a glimpse of like, yo, this is this is fresh. Imagine you get the second half of the season just for this team to gel. This could really be something. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, I don't know. This is kind of setting it up for the postseason where it's like it's either it's going to be a, a great success, right, where they either overcome everything, or it's like. Maybe we got to wait for another season now to get to the same spot. Hopefully everybody's healthy. And then maybe it's going to be something different. Because you know that's how the front office is going to think, right? Yeah. So got to let it play out, man. We got time. Just got to let it play out. 16 games left in a good spot. Brunson killing. The Nova boys are killing. Hart, another you know, great game by Hart, 15 points. Yeah, I, I love the fact that uh, – and shout out to Sergeant Sources in the chat – uh, it is Friday, after all. I love the fact that, um, you know, the Knicks have the Nova trio right now, but they got them after they've kind of gone through, like, 
battle tests as pros, like through rookies and and mm. matriculated up in the NBA. Like the Knicks have these guys at the peak of their careers. Brunson, Hart, DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo won a, won a ring. He's played for great teams. Hart's played for like, you know, he's played for competitive teams. He, that Laker team, yeah, it was a young team, but it's still the Lakers. He went to went to the Pelicans. And then um, it went to Portland. Now he ends up on on uh, on the Knicks, and then Brunson with the Mavs, and going through the playoffs and whatnot. Like they're battle tested now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, this is a seasoned team, and they all have Season. their own battles to overcome, right? Yeah. Everybody on this team. Yeah. I think yeah. at some point everybody could say, and this is something that Brunson talked about on one of his shows that all of them are coming over adversity at well, one way or another. Yeah. I think that's a really cool part about this team. Like whether it's there you go. Josh Hart going from not being on a playoff contending team, right. To right. now you have Dante who didn't even get to compete in uh, that playoff run to win the ring. Right. Yeah. He, he missed damn near all the playoffs. Yeah. So if not all, and then you have Brunson, you know, who was short changed by Dallas. They didn't really believe in him. And now look what yeah. he's doing. Right. Yeah, but but he also go to Randall, had to lead. Man. he had to lead him. Yeah, look at look at Randall. Randall's in that same boat. Yeah, okay, same boat. Same like, boat. Lakers are like, look, we're gonna go with LeBron. You can go to New Orleans. He goes to New yeah. Orleans. He was looked at as a role player. Came to New York. Worked his way up. You know, a lot of these guys are going through their own thing. So that's a really cool aspect about this team. And that's why I think that just adds to the character and to the yeah. grittiness of this team, right? Got that's where you gotta love them. Got got these guys when they were season, man. It's a great job. Hutch on the Discord. Hutch, rapid fire. Let's go. Unmute your mic, Hutch. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Good, man. How you feeling? I'm doing good. I, you know, long time listener yep. during the um, uh, during the during COVID, picked up on you guys. So happy to be here. I got it. Uh, I know you guys are trying to go quick, but a couple things. Worked for Sports Illustrated for 12 years. Was a season ticket holder in '94, '95. So we can talk about that later. But I'm so excited about this team, man. They're good. They're good. All right, man. Appreciate the call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call back anytime. Call yeah. back anytime. Bro, like, <laughs> it's a rapid fire show. <laughs> Is this a prank? <laughs> the last two callers. <laughs> it's 1.40 in the morning, and everybody wants to give us their origin story. Listen, I love the origin story. It's, there's nothing like it. No better fan base in sports. But we're asking for rapid fire, man. <laughs> you got my man, the last guy. Yo, shout out to Wagner for making the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Shout out to my son. Of the team? Oh, does his son go there? No, he's friends with the guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but I'm going to keep it rapid fire. So here we go. Uh, I've been a fan since uh, 1983. Uh, that was right before they got Bernard. Uh, you know, Hubie and... Guys, it's 1.40 in the morning. We love you guys, man. For the fans, by the fans. Rapid fire is rapid fire. I didn't even hit the music. I'm so tired. I can't even find the music button. It's 140 in the morning. Well, let me give you my synopsis, CP. <laughs> While you're here, hold on. Started God, long, break? long ago. Started long, long ago. Back in 1989. <laughs> I was born. I was writing White editorials uh, next to Rick Riley's page on Sports Illustrated, uh, but when the swimsuit issue came out, it was more so on page 12. But we love you guys, man. We love you guys. Now. All, all seriousness. <laughs> we got to have a little levity in the show, man. All right, let's, run, let's run through the box score real quick and get out of here. Because I, I think the next call is going to go. That might be overtime for us. Uh, <laughs> salute, man. Um, next next caller is just writing a bibliography yeah. as we listen. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even get to Cody Glock tonight. Cody, call back on Saturday, man. We out of here. All right, uh, team stats out real quick, man. Um, both teams uh, shoot forty percent from the field, forty three percent for the Knicks, twenty uh, percent from downtown, six to twenty nine. So one another. Hot streak, cold streak, hot and cold for the Knicks from downtown, but their defense certainly carried them. 88% from the free throw line, great job there. Uh, won the uh, rebound in battle, 50 to 45. Only 16 assists for the Knicks tonight. I didn't like how that ball movement was swollen, but you know what? Brunson was cooking for most of the night, so it didn't really matter. And like I said, the defense did what they needed to do. Uh, both teams turned the ball over quite a bit, man. 15 turnovers for the Knicks led to 19 Blazer points. 18 turnovers for the Blazers led to 23 Knicks points. 
So uh, both teams trying to feast off of the other's mistakes. 58 of 34. Knicks won the points in the paint battle. And that was it, man. Largest lead for the Knicks, 22. Largest lead for the Blazers was 7. How you feel, man? The thing for for me watching this game, CP, is that it was, like I said at the beginning of the show, it was really just the brunch and show tonight offensively. Like, guys didn't yeah. have it going, and you can look you can look at that by the, the, the numbers, right? You see that with three-point shooting, 20%, 43%. Thankfully, Jalen Brunson was just on one to yeah. help that field goal percentage go up. Um, but, you know, Knicks defensively was where they stood out, and you're not going to see all of that in, this, in the numbers tonight. Like... 16 assists, you could say the ball movement was as crisp. It wasn't, it looked disjointed at times just because outside of, it, this is where I said it was the Brunson show. Like he need, yeah. if he didn't get 45 tonight, I don't know where we would have gotten those extra points. Keep in mind, Brunson scored 43% of the Knicks points tonight. 43%. 43 wow. 43% of the Knicks points. Wow. Keep that in mind. So like, yeah, the assists were bad, but it's like, <sighs> There's nothing really for me to take away other than <laughs> it was just the Brunson yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Great job by Brunson, man. Great job by you, Al. Great job by all the mods. 105 to 93, man. Hold on, CP. Hold yes, on. yes, yes. Let me tell you up. about how I became a Knicks fan. All right. So it was back <laughs> when LJ hit the four point shot. Okay. <laughs> Salute to all our callers, man. Call back anytime. Call back anytime. All right, man. Um, salute to our sponsors for sure, though. Salute to our sponsors. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Play Underdog Fantasy's Pick'em Games and Daily Fantasy Games as well. Uh, some great fun to be had with the Pick'ems. You can choose between two to five players, win up to 20 times your money. And then with the draft, you just draft your players. Uh, based on the NBA schedule, pick six players, and away we go. Who won that last one? You won. You won the last game, didn't you? I did win the last one. That yeah. is correct. Yeah. You said something Thank that was incorrect, though. What was you it? You said you were still waiting. You guys were still waiting on me to win one. I won the last one. Uh, what are you talking about? I was a, I was a draft champ the night before that. I don't remember that. You one. said in a tweet that you was you guys were still waiting for me to get a win. I got a win. Yeah, I'm still waiting for you to that. get a win. I, I I see. I don't count that one. I got. I, don't the, think I, I got that one tonight. You, you just you beat me by like five points yesterday. That is correct. That was ridiculous, man. As Absolutely. some would say, it wasn't pretty, but it was gritty. It wasn't pretty, but it was gritty. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. All right, man. Uh, great show. Let me um, let me salute the Super Chats. Oh, uh, we got Lunchtime Live tomorrow. Kaz is coming through on the show, 1230, with uh, Kazim Famiude. So, uh, so shout out to Kaz. He'll be on the way. We'll do a fan mailbag. You guys can call in with more of your takes on the state of the Knicks. That'll be at 1230, so don't miss it. Shout out to Sean Twomey, Alf. Just joined the franchise channel members, so shout out to Sean. Also, sports with B.I. Salute to B.I., man. $10 super chat from B.I. Says, what up, family? Hashtag KFCV. Salute to B.I. Chuck D., Rhyme Animal. Chuck D. Al says, $10 super chat. Says, I wish Burks could work out this thing. It's definitely reminiscent of Deborah Harkman, 94. This is Chuck Knobloch. is uh, mental. Yeah, we're going to need it. Anyway, happy birthday, Larry Johnson. Prayers up to the Barrett fam. Absolutely. Happy birthday to LJ. And prayers up to the Barrett family once again, man. Rest in peace to Nathan Barrett. Uh, heartfelt condolences go out to the family, man. And don't forget, people, tomorrow, yeah, 7 p.m., game of the week. Game of the we week. We are preview. previewing Knicks versus Sacramento Kings. Yeah. So make sure to lock in tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll have Cavs at 1230. Game of the week preview at 7. So make sure you guys keep it locked, man. We out of here. Great show, out. Great show.